Hi, the last time I did the video for these two files I made some mistakes so I'm going to redo and hopefully this will be the last attempt because I think I've tried to do this video five times and I've made little errors with uh, with them every time. Um, on the left here we're creating a very small class. This is going to be our object. It's called class heap quiz and the only thing that it has is a single attribute, no methods, one attribute, int id equals zero. And then we're going to come over here and in a totally separate file we're going to create public class heap quiz test with the public static void main string args execution statement to start the program and we're going to create int x equals zero because we're going to use this x as like a counter for our while loop. We are going to make an array of the object type heap quiz. This is our object that we're talking about with five elements. So to do that we use the object name, the class name over here heap quiz. We have the two straight brackets uh, which are there to indicate an index of the array and you could say heap quiz array. We're going to call it HQ. This is going to be the reference variable we're going to use and we're going to use the equal sign and new heap quiz which again is the name of this object over here and in these straight brackets we're actually going to put five which means there's going to be five elements in this array. It's kind of like if you had a grocery list and you had five things on your list. This is a constraint which means we cannot put more things on the list than we say we're going to put. So if we say heap quiz five then that means there's only going to be five or less things that we're going to be working with. We're going to use this while loop here and the condition in the parentheses that has to be true in order for this whole thing to execute is x less than three. Well up here we created x is zero so while zero is less than three do this. It's true so we will. Here we're going to make each array element an official object reference of the class heap quiz. Here all we did was create an array and we decided uh, an array of this type which means it's going to refer to this over here and what's inside of it and we decided we're going to let it have five elements. Uh, but this statement right here is what actually lets those elements be linked or pointing to an object address, uh, an, a, a space that's allocated for um, this particular element and it's basically its linkage to heap quiz over here. But this is just the first iteration of the loop. The first iteration of the loop is saying HQ with an index of zero equals new heap quiz. So we've created one element and linked it to one object address. Now if I open this, this is just a reminder that uh, our heap quiz array HQ can have five elements and arrays start with an index of zero. So if we were to create all five arrays we would have index zero, index one, index two, index three, and index four. Because again arrays start with index zero. So when we see HQ and we see uh, these uh, square brackets, whatever the variable value, uh, whatever X's value is at the time, that's which element in our array list, that's which one we're referring to. So with this while loop, with X being zero, we are creating uh, the, the name of the array being uh, HQ, HQ index zero equals new heap quiz. So this very first element we're creating and we're assigning it an, uh, an address location that is linked to heap quiz object. So we're creating an object uh, this way. This is very important. We're create, we've created the one single object at index zero. Now here we're taking now since we've created this uh, object reference variable, now that we've created it by saying equals new heap quiz, we can use this with the dot operator and the uh, whatever it is inside this object, which is just this attribute, it's all it's got, and we're setting it to a value. So um, 
hq with the index of 0 dot id equals x and x is still 0 because we haven't changed the value of x yet. Now, now this whole thing hq and we're using x but we know what the value of that is so it's it's like saying hq index 0 dot id the value of this whole thing so when we come over here remember this that I'm highlighting when we print out the data this is to prove what we just did we're using system dot out dot print line and in parentheses that same thing I've highlighted right here the hqx dot id hqx being hq index 0 currently dot id we're not putting the these letters we're not spitting that out we're spitting out the value of it so we will have the number 0 here we will concatenate uh, the words is at address location and then we're going to have the value of the array hq at index 0 so the value of hq index 0 is going to is going to pop up and it's going to be like a co it's going to have the name of the of the object it's going to say heap quiz up here and then it's going to give a letter number combination which is is uh, kind of like pointing to where this memory location is going to be and then at that point we're going to increment our counter so x is equal to x plus 1 well x was originally 0 so x is equal to 0 plus 1 so x at this time is now 1. We're at the end of the loop. We go back up to the while and now x is 1 and we're going to ask the question is 1 less than 3? Yes it is. So now our array hq is going to now have the index of 1. So here we are in the notepad. Now we're creating this second element and we're setting it to a new heap quiz object. So now it's going to be created and it's going to point to a new memory location, a new address. Here we're going to do the same thing we did before. HQ with the index of 1. We're using the dot operator and we're going to access something about this uh, object. Well, again, the only thing we're accessing is the only thing that's in there, which is ID, and we're setting it to a value. So HQ index 1 dot id equals 1. So this second element right here is going to change the id of this object right here on the left. It's going to change it from 0 to 1. The value of id is now 1 for hq um, 1. Then we're going to spit that out. The value of hqx dot id again x is equal to one. So what it really means is hq index one dot id. The number is the value of this is one. So we get the number one and the words is it address location. And then we're going to see the actual address, the memory location that this object is going to allow the information to reside uh, will uh, be hq. Um, we'll we'll reference this element right here so it's going to have heap quiz and then it's going to have some letter number combination and we're going to increment it again so now x is going to become 2 it's going to go back up here to the word while and now the condition is as long as 2 is less than 3 that is true so now hq with the index of 2 now we're dealing with this guy right here, the third element in our array. We are now creating, we're linking it to a new heap quiz object. So now we have three references, HQ0, HQ1, and HQ2, and three addresses that they're pointing to, three heap quiz address locations, memory locations, that will put whatever information that we want in this case, it's going to be referring to what value ID has in each of these uh, elements in the array. Okay, then uh, HQ with the index of 2, again this guy, uh, is going to access this ID with a dot operator and the name ID, and we're going to set it to what is x? x is 2. So now the value of hqx.id, the value of that is 2. So when we use system.out.println, instead of this, we're going to see the number 2, 
it's going to be concatenated to is at address location and then we're going to have plus HQX which is we're going to see what that address it is pointing to what this element is going to point to it's going to have that heap quiz name and a letter number combination we are going to increment X up to 3 now now it's going to go back up to the while and the condition is is 3 less than 3 well no it's not so since this is false all this gets skipped and when all this gets skipped we jump out of the loop and we go to the next little block of code what I'm gonna do because I don't want to look at all this all at once is I'm gonna comment all of this extra stuff uh, the beginning of a comment is forward slash asterisk and then wherever you want to finish the comment which I'm gonna finish it here you finish it with an asterisk forward slash so that way my my two ending curly braces are not green they're still part of the code the only thing that isn't is this stuff that's green in the middle however uh, when I I'm gonna run this just to show you what the loop did and then when I'm done I, I'm going to change the while condition to show you a few other things. When I show you a few other points, then I'm going to take this beginning of the comment and I'm going to uh, right click and cut it and I'm going to move it down here to paste and I'm going to explain this little snippet and then, and then I'm going to run it and show you what happens. Then I'm going to take this little guy and I'm going to move it down here and then I'm going to explain this snippet and so on and so forth until I get all the way done and then I'll be done with this video. So. Um, First off, I don't want to show that snippet yet, so I'm going to cut that and put it back up here. I just want to show you, uh, first off, the result of our while loop. So I have to go to my command prompt, so I hit run, CMD is already there, hit OK, I've got my command prompt. The uh, These two files, I have them open in Notepad++ so that we can look at the code, but these files reside if I go here, see I have, on my desktop I have a folder that's called Head First Java Nice Keep. Inside that folder I have a couple uh, HTML web pages. I have another folder called Box. If you go inside a box, I have all these other folders. I'm working on my college book, uh, Head First Java, and I'm dealing with Chapter 3 issues, so I go in that folder, and then you see here are all class files, here are all HTML web page files, here's mp3s, here's mp4 videos, here's my Java files, and I have AVI video clips. Um, what I am doing is I'm using a screen recorder that creates this AVI file, then I have to convert that to an mp4 file because then in my HTML web page file I have a, a video tag that presents the video that I'm working on right now. I also take my mp4 video file and download it to um, either my YouTube channel or Facebook or or, G, uh, or, or Google Plus for, for future reference. But what I have to do right now to show you this output is is uh, I have to compile a Java file and the one that I'm working on right now is um, I've got heapquiz.java and heapquiztest.java those are the two files that we are looking at. Oops, not that. It's this one and this one. Now, the one that I actually want to compile in Java is the one that has this part, this snippet, public static void main string arcs, because that's the execution statement. That gets the ball uh, rolling. That's what the code looks for to run. So, I just showed you where these files reside, but in order for my command prompt to work, I have to have that path up here. Uh, so right here at the insertion point, I'm going to hit CD for change directory, and I'm going to type the word desktop and hit enter. Now I'm in the, uh, the desktop. Um, if I hit DIR, that's going to show me what all's on my desktop. Well. The folder I just showed you, Head First Java Nice Keep, that's the folder I want to get inside. So now I hit CD, Head First Java Nice Keep, and hit Enter. Now that is added to my path. If I hit DIR again, I see the contents of the folder. What I want to go inside in that folder is box. So I CD box, Enter. Now that's added to 
it and I DIR to look in that directory. There's my chapter 3 in that directory, so I CD CH3. Now I'm going to go inside my chapter 3 folder, DIR to see what all's in my chapter 3 folder, and you see all those files that I just showed you. And the one I'm interested in is this one right here. This is what I'm going to compile. And this, the name of this file is right here, heapquiztest.java. And it's right here, heapquiztest.java. So all I want to do is, now that I'm in the right folder, in the right path, is hit, uh, use the keyword Java C to compile my Java file, and then properly um, spell heapquiztest. Now see, when I was getting to the path, when I typed head first Java nice keep, I did it all in lowercase and the computer was smart enough to not care and it opened it up for me. But now that I'm compiling, I'm going to try because I think it's going to give me an error. I'm going to try to spell heapquiztest.java without using caps and I believe I'm going to get a, a problem uh, because I think that the capitalization or lack of capitalization is important. So heap quiz test.java enter oh it actually worked I thought that this was uh, case sensitive okay well it compiled okay let me see if I can run it without spelling it without uh, being case, case sensitive heap quiz test just the word Java and hit enter there we go error could not find or load main class heap quiz test so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run with the correct capitalization that the actual uh, name has. Heap quiz test with HQNT capitalized dot Java. Hit enter. Error could not find or load main class heap quiz test. Okay, that's because I've incorrectly I've incorrectly typed this. When I run it. I don't use the Java extension. The only time I use the Java extension is when I Java C to compile it. I compile it with the dot Java. When I run it with just Java, I do not use dot Java. So let me hit CLS to clear my screen because it's looking a little cluttered. Java heap quiz test enter. Okay, good. We're good to go. Here's my output that the while loop created. Zero, the way I got zero is, remember I said HQ index X dot ID is set to whatever X is. And we started off with x being 0. The value of x is 0 there. The value of x is 0 there. The value of x is 0 there. That means the first index of that array, the first element. And therefore, the value of x is there. The value of this is 0. And it goes into this whole ditty right here. So the value of this whole ditty right here is 0. So the first line has 0. Then we've got a space in the words is at address location in another space right here space is at address location in another space and then we concatenate with the plus sign HQ index X which again X is valued at 0 so this is HQ index 0 with notepad it means this first element of the heap quiz array that we named HQ this is the element we're creating this is the element we're talking about so zero is talking about this first element is at address location heap quiz which is the name of the object we're dealing with that we're referring to at 106 d69c that's that letter number combination that I told you was allocating a memory spot on the heap for this particular um, reference to this object and this line right here is what allowed the first element to have an address. If we didn't have equals new heap quiz, then HQ0 would only be a reference variable. It would not be attached, pointing to, or linking to an address of the heap quiz object at all. It would not be attached, linked, 
or pointing to an object. It would just be a reference. So this is very important. Um, because we have, while x is less than 3, once we incremented x and it became 3, it did not create all five of our elements. It's, it jumped right out of the loop. But up here we created our heap quiz array hq equals new heap quiz 5. We created this array with the ability to make five elements. So the so when we get further down here and the code refers to hq3 and hq4, they don't have addresses linked to them. They are not pointing to addresses, ob, uh, heap quiz object addresses. They are going to be assigned to whatever HQ1 address is pointing to, or HQ1, or here we're setting HQ3 to null, or HQ0, and so on and so forth. If I want to see five elements of the array pointing to five of their own unique memory addresses on the heap, what I would do, what I would be change my condition here, instead of x less than 3, I have x less than 5. I'm going to save it in my file. I'm going to come back here to my command prompt. I'm going to hit my up key until I see Java C again. Now I'm going to recompile because anytime you make a change here, you have to recompile. You have to Java C it again in the command prompt. So um, I'm going to hit enter. Okay, now I'm going to hit my down button and I'm going to see my Java heap quiz test with no extension. I'm going to hit enter. Oh, again, it's because this wasn't capitalized. Okay, so let me clear this screen and just type these out properly. Java C heap quiz test dot Java. This is how I compile it. And even though this allowed me to compile it without using proper capitalization, because my running needs proper, proper capitalization, I'm going to be consistent in the way that I type my commands. So I'm going to spell this with the proper capitalization that I named the file. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to compile any changes that I made. And now I'm going to type Java heap quiz test, no extension, just enter. Now I have all five of my elements, index 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, all five elements, and they all have an address location because now they are linked to their own object of the heap quiz, the, their own heap quiz object location uh, memory area. And uh, int id was initially set at 0, but as we, in, as we went through all these uh, increments of the while loop, we took whatever x was and we changed the, the dot id of heap quiz from 0 to whatever x changed to. And also it also matched the um, index of the array element. So that's how we got the 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 to correlate with h, q, index 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that was just an interesting way that they put that um, code so that we could actually look at it in that manner. Um, the, the code from the book does not have us create five elements pointing to five objects, object locations. It gives us this x uh, less than 3 so that you can understand that um, this right here does not give you elements and automatically create the uh, address locations of the object. This shows you how, depending on what your while condition is, it's only going to create what you tell it to create. Now, um, I showed you that this creates up to three as long uh, as long as x is less than three it, it will start with zero and go zero one two and create the first three elements but that was less than how many the constraint now what happens if we change our uh, value to more than what our constraint is well it will create the full 
it will create the full number of elements that this heap quiz array will hold, but it will also give you an error message because this is going out of the boundaries of what you said. You said you were going to create an array with five elements, but now here you are looping, trying to make more than five. So you're going to, have, you, you know, by using the HQ um, variable here and this uh, representation of what the index is, you are attempting to make more than you said. You are out of the boundary. You are out of your constraint. So um, now that I have changed this to as long as x is less than 9, let's see what happens when we run it. We're going to recompile it, and then we are going to um, run it. And it makes all, all 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, but we have this exception in thread main, java.lang.arrayindex.outofbounds exception 5 at heap quiz test dot main and in parentheses heap quiz test dot java and this means at line 10 which is right here this is the problem it's it's starting at zero and it goes through the loop and it does it it makes makes this guy it goes up to the while x goes from zero to one and that's still true so it goes down and then it makes this guy goes back up and now it's two two is less than nine so it does it again and it makes this guy makes this guy makes this guy with every iteration of the loop but then when it attempts to do uh, more than five elements it gets here and it tries to create a new address location using this HQ and this index, well, the code, the Java knows that if you say you're only going to make five elements, when you go and try to make a sixth element with a, a pointing to an address location for heap quiz object, it's going to say, no, thank you, that's not right. So it doesn't make any more than five elements. Even though you wanted it to, you wanted it to go as long as x is less than 9. You wanted to make 8 elements, but it wouldn't. It refused. It gave you 5, and it gave you an exception basically telling you why it wouldn't give you that many. So if you wanted 8 elements, you'd have to come up here and change that 5 to an 8, and then this would run. And I guess I could do that to show you how that would be. Come over here. Compile it again and run it again and you have index 0 to 7 which those are 8 elements and they all have their unique address uh, memory allocation spaces pointing to those and if you notice each time I run this the first uh, the zero element, which is the first element, the zero index, which is the first element, uh, at 106D69C has been consistent. Each time we compiled this and ran it, it didn't change what that element's <coughs> location was pointing to. It didn't change any of those. All it did is tack on a couple more and give them a new memory space. Okay, so now I'm like really veering off uh, let me let me change this back to its original five elements. Let me change this back to its original um, iteration of three and run this one more time so that I can get back to the regular code <clears throat> that the book is showing. Okay, now I'm going to get down to these little snippets one by one. This is, these are the references, these are the elements. What happens when you set uh, one of the elements to another element? What's going to happen is that this one, we did, not, uh, we did not create a brand new element with an index of three. If you remember, based on this right here, and this, based on this, we only created three, so we have uh, index zero, index one, and index two. This right here is referring to uh, HQ with an index of three, which we didn't we didn't point it to an address, but the equal sign is going to point to this address. Where is HQ one pointing? 
here's the 1, and it's this middle one. It's pointing to heap quiz at 52E922. So what's going to happen is HQ3, HQ with an index of 3, that reference will point to this address. Both of them will point to the address this points to. And let me move my initial comment so that this will run. The system.out.print line will give us a backspace n, which gives us uh, goes down to the next line. It's going to give us four dashes. It's going to drop to the next line. And it's going to give us what the value of HQ3 is, meaning the address location that it's pointing to. It's going to give us a space, the word and, and another space. And then it's going to give you the value of HQ index 1, or where it's pointing to that memory location. So let me hit um, save. Let me go back here and hit up until I see, uh, up a couple of times until I see Java C, hit enter. So I don't have to keep retyping over and over. And now it gives me the new path, so it's recompiled with my changes. Now I'm going to hit down. I see my uh, command without having to type it because this, as long as you don't go out of this box, you don't close out of it. Uh, it's going to keep. It's going to save your commands. So when you can t t tap up or down with the up or down arrow, you don't have to keep retyping. So now I've got Java heap quiz test, and I'm going to run it now. Hit enter. Okay, so we have our first three things that we've been looking at that happened because of our while loop. And now we're going to look at this part, heap quiz 052E922 and heap quiz at 52E922. And, and I said that that was going to be the second one right here, and it is. The index 1 is pointing to it, and even though HQ3 we didn't create pointing at anything because of this equal sign, it's also going to point to the same place this guy's pointing to. Okay, so now let me move the next one. Let me HQ4 again was not created, but it's a reference just the same. It's an element reference just the same because we said that this heap quiz can have five elements. We just didn't link that reference to uh, an address location for this uh, object. So what it's going to do is the same thing that this one did. It's going to be set equal to whatever HQ index 1 is pointed at. Um, so we're going to get a, re a repeat of heap quiz at 52E922 and heap quiz at 52E922. When we run this again, this is going to give us the exact same output that this gave us. All three of these elements, HQ index 1, HQ index 3, and HQ index 4 are all going to point at that same memory address. And we get our same thing that the uh, loop did, the while loop. This is the first thing that we did, and here is, I told you it would be a repeat, and it is. So let's go to the next one. Let me move this down here. Now we're taking the HQ3, which way up here, we set it pointing to this address. But now we're going to set it to the word null, which basically means that the pointer to the address is just going to go away. It's like we're just going to snip it off. It's not going to point to anything. It, we're still going to have the reference. It's just not going to point to anything at all. So let's save it up here, come down here, up, up, enter, down, enter, so that I'm going to compile it and run it. And everything else is a repeat and null. It's null. The value of HQ3, the memory address that it's pointing to, is null. It's pointing to nothing. Now we're going to cut this and go down to the next one. Now we have the HQ4, which up here we pointed to this memory address. Now we're going to set it to HQ0. HQ0 is this one, heap quiz at 106D69C. So now we're going to have that memory address 
the value of this is going to be the same as the value of this. Whatever this is pointing to, now this will pointing to. So remember, at 106D69C. We save it up here, go down here, up, up, enter, down, enter to compile it and run it. See? Heap quiz at 106D69C and heap quiz 106D69C. So now both of these references are pointing to the same place, the same object on the heap. Let's cut this and go to the next tidbit. Now HQ, we want to set that to whatever HQ index 3. HQ index 0 is now going to point to whatever HQ3 is pointing to. You have to trickle up because we're changing some of these references so much. You have to start where you're at right here. And I don't remember what the value of that was. We could change these things 35 times and there would be so many changes I wouldn't be able to remember. Fortunately, the computer can remember. But let's just trickle up. Let's look for HQ3 to figure out what the value of that was. Up here, here's 4, here's 0, here's HQ3. The last value that HQ3 was set was set to null. So that means that it's null here, and that means that this value will also be null. So when we come out here and we have our dashed lines plus HQ0, that's going to be the word null, the word and, and the value of HQ3 is also going to be the word null. So when I run this again, the last thing that we're going to see before the path is going to be the words null and null. So let me save it. Come down here. Up, up, enter, down, enter. And there you go. Null and null. Okay, we're almost done. We only have two more examples. Uh, cut and paste. Okay, HQ3, we just established was null, but we want it to point to something, so now we're going to set it to HQ2. If we go up here, well, let's see, what was, let's see, did we change HQ index 2 at all? I don't think we did. Let's trickle up. We didn't do anything here with it, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here nothing here. So H2 index 2 is still going to have this same address. Now HQ, HQ3 is going to have the same address as HQ2. Heap quiz at 25154F. So the next output we're going to see is heap quiz at 25154F and heap quiz at 25154F. We saved it, come down here, up, up, enter, down, enter, to compile and run, and yes, last one, heap quiz at 25154F and heap quiz at 25154F. The very last one, I'm going to get rid of both the beginning comment symbol and ending comment symbol, because I don't need to comment them out anymore. We're going to take the HQ2 and have it point wherever HQ0 points. But let's trickle up. What is the current value for HQ0? Let's see, we didn't do anything here with HQ0. And here, HQ0 was set to what HQ3 was. Well, I don't remember what that was, so let's trickle up. What was HQ3? Here it is. HQ3 was set to null. So it was null here, making it null here. That means that it's still null here, which means that this is going to point to the same thing, which is null. So our last printout is going to be the dashed lines and uh, the word null, the word and, and the word null. So our very last example uh, on how these reference, uh, how these references point to object addresses will be null and null. So up, up, enter, down, enter, compile and run it, and sure as shit, null and null. So I've basically showed you a few things, how to make a very, very, very simple object with one single attribute, how to make a whole other file and by using the public static void main string args execution statement, it's going to open up on this side how to create a variable that we can use as a counter, how to make a, uh, an array 
that is of data type this object. It's not an int or a string. It's an actual object data type. It's an array. It's it's got it's got a reference variable that we're going to use. And this is how you create uh, the array equals new heap quiz five means we're going to uh, get allow it to have uh, five elements. We're going to use the while loop. And using our x, we are going to decide how many actual objects are going to be linked to our references. In this case, 3 with index 0, 1, and 2. This is the very uh, important line of code that's going to actually, instead of HQ0, HQ1, HQ2 only being references, it's going to actually link them, connect them, point them to new heap quiz, empty parentheses, this is where the address is created, the uh, memory location that's allocated for these particular objects. We used, uh, now that we created the actual objects this way, using this entire line right here, this is creating the very first one, we are able to use this with the, whatever the uh, index is, HQ, with the first one being zero, we're able to use the dot operator and grab some kind of something out of this object, which there's only one thing. It's an attribute called ID. So we grab it, dot ID, and we set it to a value. Well, we set it to whatever X is as it changes in this while loop. We use system.out.println to spit out the values and prove what we did. And then we incremented the counter, went up to the while loop, and we did it a few more times. After we finished that, we showed how these references, these elements of the array, which refer to this heap quiz object, we showed how they point to addresses and how you can change to what object addresses they actually point to, how they can you can make them point to nothing, either by using the word null or making one of the references point to another one that isn't pointing to anything. And then even after they don't point to anything, we showed that you can just reassign them to a reference that is indeed pointing to um, a memory location of the object. So we showed you all those different things that we could do with the references of this object heap quiz.